Hey, what's up everybody? Today we are gonna do a TurboTax review. So I'm gonna jump into TurboTax and I'm gonna create an account. My name's Brad, I'm with Wooten CPA and the whole point of the YouTube channel is to bring peace to you and your finance and tax responsibilities. And so walking through this TurboTax return, giving you some advice as you prepare your tax returns if you're gonna end up preparing it yourself. Uh, and then also giving you some advice recommendations on whether or not you should use TurboTax at the end of this video, hopefully will help bring peace to you as you're thinking through tax season this year in 2020. Now, I've never actually used TurboTax. I used Tax Act when I was in college. It was free because of my income level and the simplicity of my tax return at the time. TurboTax has uh, one of those options as well if your return is simple enough. Uh, but I've never actually used TurboTax, so you're gonna see me walking through it for the very first time. I'm gonna go through and do a uh, example made up return that I have. I created the W-2s. So what I have is a, a spouse one, spouse two, Married couple with one child. They both had W-2 income, one full-time employment, one part-time employment. So you'll see that their wages are a little bit different. Now, spouse two also had a side hustle. Everyone seems to have a side hustle these days. So we've got a little bit of self-employment income on a Schedule C business. We're also going to throw in an interest deduction on your college debt that you have that you're still paying on, as well as a little bit of interest income from a savings or a certificate of deposit. And so those are the, the situation we have here on the sample I'm going to do. Very simple, very basic tax return. You add the Schedule C in, makes it a little bit more complex, but it's a very simple Schedule C. And so, again, I will walk through the whole return. You'll get to see me prepare the entire return. So this will help you if you're trying to use TurboTax, know what you should do and just get a feel for how the program works. But also at the end, uh, I will give a review of my thoughts on TurboTax and whether or not it's a good program for you to use and whether or not I recommend it for you in preparing your taxes this year. And so I'll give you that. I'll also post down in the video uh, comments or in the information about the video, the marker on what point in the video that review starts in case you want to skip ahead and just listen to the review. Uh, because this is going to be a long video. I was on, I was able to keep it under an hour in preparing this return, but it will be a pretty lengthy video. All right, so we've pulled up the website here, and as I mentioned, I have never used TurboTax before. I have used another prep software, but because I've been, uh, had access to professional software, I've always used that to prepare my tax returns. So this is the first time I've been on the website. We're gonna scroll through, we're gonna take a look, we're gonna set it up, we're gonna try to do a tax return. Hopefully it lets me put in some of this fake information. We'll find out. So we're going to look first on the TurboTax website. Looks like they guarantee a free federal return. Big bold letters, except you know that's only for easily and accurately file your simple tax returns. So we'll look and see what a simple tax return is. They include a couple of things, but unfortunately, I think that because we have our side hustle on this family, we are not going to qualify for that free guarantee. So. It's guaranteed for other people, but not guaranteed for us, I guess. Now, the next thing we're going to get is a maximum refund guarantee. So if we click on this, 100% accurate calculations, where I certainly hope that they would calculate the taxes appropriately because that is the sole purpose of this software is to calculate the taxes for us. So thank you, TurboTax, for that. Maximum refund guarantee. Okay, I like the sound of that. I definitely want my maximum refund. I don't want anything less. And what the IRS owes back to me. Uh, if, if you go somewhere and they don't get you your maximum refund, then you need to go back and get your money back. Now they do say if you get a larger refund or a smaller tax due from another tax preparer or preparation method, then they'll refund the turbo tax purchase price that you paid. But basically that means you have to do your tax return again. You have to pay another software or another person to do a second tax return just to check and see if you got your maximum refund. So they know nobody is going to double check this, hardly anybody. And the whole point is to be able to pull you in with this marketing tactic that TurboTax is going to get you your maximum refund. Well, I've got another video on this, but basically taxes, you know, it's, it's a simple math problem. And if you put the same information into 50 different softwares and they are calculating the taxes correctly, which they all should be, then you're going to get the same output. The only way that you can get more or less 
uh, more tax refund or less tax owed from another software is if you put in different information. Assuming both are calculating the tax return correctly, which they should be. So we'll keep going down. Looks like uh, TurboTax will now let a real CPA review your tax return. Guaranteed done right. Now, I'm sure this doesn't happen often, but I did have a coworker contact me last year. I work for a large nonprofit ministry last year. We qualify as clergy, which means we get minister's housing allowance. We are self-employed for uh, FICA for uh, Social Security and Medicare purposes. And not a lot of people are familiar with that. So anyway, this coworker said that she paid the extra for a live CPA. She went through a couple of people, got to a tax attorney with TurboTax who told her that her W-2 was incorrect, that the company was doing it wrong, and that she basically needed to run. That is completely false and incorrect. So I don't think that they can guarantee it's always done right. Probably mostly done right. But in that particular situation, I was actually pretty shocked. I never would have expected that to be the case. Uh, and so this most likely is very helpful. Uh, I actually don't have a problem with this. I think it's a great thing TurboTax has done. A great option for them to add is for you to be able to talk to a experienced CPA or enrolled agent. But just be aware, not every CPA is uh, experienced in every single piece of the tax code. And so you have to find one who is uh, familiar with your type of tax situation. So let's see, let's keep going down. Every deduction found. Well, basically only if you answer the questions correct, because we'll see that this is just a survey where you're putting in all the information. So the error still lies on you if you don't input the information correctly or if you don't understand a question and you might answer it incorrectly. So how does it work? All right. Let's go ahead and just start our free trial. So right now, free, deluxe, premier, and self-employed are all available to me. The second I choose I want to maximize deductions and credits, the free edition, no longer available to me. Who wouldn't check that box? All right, I do have W-2. Uh, let's see, I paid rent. I do not own my home. I have a child or dependent. I don't want to do the tax expert. I want to do this on my own. I'm paying off some student loans and I'm self employed because I have, or sorry, yeah, I'm self employed because I have that side hustle. And so I'm going to need to check that box. And if your life is changing, you have questions, well, that's going to kick you over to a live CPA. We don't want to do that. So we're going to uncheck that box. So basically, now I have. The self-employed is recommended, which is going to be $90 plus an additional fee for the state. So we're quite a ways away from free now. We're looking at $100, $120 uh, if you don't do it super early in the tax buying season. That's going to be your regular price. So anyway, let's go ahead, do what they recommend, and start for free. How did you do your taxes last year? I used a different tax software. Continue into it. All right, it's going to make me create an account. All right, so this page popped up, save, sign now, save time later. That sounds great. I want to save time later. By sharing your tax info with your Intuit account, you can save time and effort. With your OK, you can get personalized analysis strategies. Uh, I still, I read this, I still am not 100% sure what it's saying. But it's going to include things like finding my tax savings, refinancing existing loans, I don't even see a way to skip this. So I'm going to hit continue. Sign now, save later. Oh, here we go. So consent to disclosure tax return information. This is where it sounds like they're giving it to third parties who might recommend a loan or a new credit card for me. I'm definitely going to say no thanks to that. I've got plenty of people trying to contact me already. All right, so let's see. Let's get to know me. So. I am spouse one Smith, spouse one Smith. My date of birth is going to be January 1st, 1985. My zip code is going to be 28562. Happy belated birthday, spouse one. Thank you. How did you do your taxes last year? 
Are you feeling? How are you feeling about doing your taxes? I feel good. Us too. Continue. That seemed kind of random. If you have a PDF copy of last year's return, we can use it to jumpstart. Uh, I'll type in my info. Continue. Now let's talk a little bit about your life. So this is where apparently the um, survey questions are going to begin. So it's just gathering all this information. It's the same thing that I do when I sit down with clients is I get to know them a little bit so that I understand what their tax situation is. So let's say we're married in this situation. We have children, college students, and college student in the family, no, own a home, no, paid rent. So I remembered those from where we checked that when we were trying to figure out which TurboTax system we wanted to use. Don't pay that. Vehicle registration fees. I had a job. No child care expenses. We're going to try to keep this pretty simple. I'm going to say I did have bank account interest. And, oh, look, I can see more. Traditional Roth. Oh, I'm going to say that I did have an IRA contribution, actually, in this example. So we had to click show more to see these questions. I'm going to say none of this rest applies to us. Show more. Paid student loan interest. So remember, we answered that before we even logged into the software. It remembered that. And I'm going to say we don't have any of the rest of this. So make sure you hit that show more so you continue to get those questions. So you're speeding toward the finish line, spouse one. We're caught up on your life and financial picture. We're ready. Let's keep going. All right, so they got our personal info. We're going to keep on going. All right, we will continue. Spouse one, Smith, junior, nickname, no. Social security number. I'm going to leave that out for now if I can. Member of former U.S. Armed Services, no. Tell us the state you live in, North Carolina. Do you live in another state? No. Someone else claimed me as a dependent on their return? No. I was legally blind? No. I'm preparing this return for spouse one who's passed away? No. Continue. Uh, I already told her that I was married. Do you file this return together with your spouse? Yes. So we're going to be spouse two. Smith. Birthday is going to be the same day as mine, actually. 1985. We were born on the same day, miles apart. Do you have children? Or support another person? Yes, I have children. So who do you support? My child. We're just going to go simple tax return here as we continue to work through this. Child 1, Smith. Date of birth is going to be January 1, 2010. Whole family is born on January 1st. This is a son. The child is none of the above, not adopted or a foster child. Continue. Child 1. As a dependent involves counting each month he lived with you. Child one lived with me for the whole year. How many of those months were in the U.S.? The whole year. Continue. Do any of these apply? Did not pass away and was not disabled. We know child one is a kid, but we have to ask. Did he pay for most of his living expenses? Let us know if one of the few kids who pay for more than half their living expenses. No. It didn't pay for half his living expenses. He doesn't pay for anything. He's 10 years old. Legal parents uh, are birth adopted. Spouse one and spouse two are the legal parents. Did a relative live in your home and support child one? No. I support child one. Good news. Child one qualifies as your dependent. Fantastic. Enter your current mailing address. We're going to say we live on 100 Smith Street in New Bern. Continue. Double check. Continue. Looks good. Did either of you make money in other states? No. What's the best dying pass for you? Married filing jointly. Sounds great. I would like to do that. Some of this info is missing. You can edit it now or later. I think what's missing is just our social security numbers, so we're going to go ahead and continue without putting those in. All right, I want to get total peace of mind with max benefits. Of course I want to do that. The max, recommended, defend and restore, data encryption, trained agents will provide guidance, full audit representation, identity loss insurance, full identity restoration, identity theft monitoring, priority care. As an additional $60. So we were already at $90. We're going to add an additional $60. We are now at $150 for this tax prep. 
Now, I'm going to say, ah, my chances of being audited are pretty slim. It's about 1% right now uh, in the U.S., so I'm going to say don't add it. You can add it if you want. There were some good benefits there, uh, but for $60, I'm going to not add that. Let's get going on your income. Did you receive any dividend payments? No, we didn't check that box earlier, so no. Did we receive retirement income? No. Did you receive or sell any investments? No. Rental or royalty income? No. Get a Schedule 1? No. Control a foreign bank account? No. Great. So job, W-2. I'm going to start that because we have to enter in our W-2 information. If either of you have more than one W-2, we'll go through them one at a time. Let's work on taxpayers' W-2. So all of this is over here. Uh, the employer is Company 110 Main Street. All right, so here we go. We're going to type in box one. If you remember, that was $40,000 of taxable income. 40, I think, no, it did not populate any other box. So $5,000 was my federal withholding. 40 was there. I have to type all these in. Usually these will populate on most software. So I have to manually type them all in. All right, box 7, 8. All right, everything is blank except box 13 says I have a retirement plan. 12A has code D with $2,000. That's basically a 401k retirement plan that I put $2,000 into. Box 12, code D, $2,000. Box 13 has retirement plan, retirement plan checked. States North Carolina, state ID number, state wages were the same. And the state income tax withheld here of $1,500. I'm on track to get my biggest refund. Wow, that is so great, TurboTax. Now explain why I'm getting a refund. Once we have all your income, we'll dig into tax breaks. Deductions and credits will help you get the biggest possible refund. Let's click this. You made $40,000 at Company One last year, and $5,000 was taken out of your paycheck for taxes. Based on your total income, any other information we have about you so far, you're getting back 6533 This is useless. Completely useless. Thank you for telling me I might get $6,500 back if I were to stop now. But I can't stop now. My wife has a W-2. We have a side hustle. We have interest income. And we had an IRA deduction. So this is completely useless information. I would recommend you just blow right past it. All right. Do any of these uncommon situations apply to this W-2? Work outside, religious employment. Corrected W-2, non-standard, no. Did your spouse have another W-2 to enter? Yes. Whose name is on the W-2? My spouse. Okay, let's get on with it. All right, so I'm going to put in the W-2. I'm going to cut past that. I'm just going to put in the spouse's W-2, which is just like spouse 1. However, spouse 2 works for a different company, a different address, different wages did not contribute to a retirement plan. So this is basically just a part-time job, $20,000 a year, $2,000 of state uh, federal withholding, and $500 of state income tax withheld on that $20,000 of taxable income. So I'm going to input that real quick and skip past that. All right, so I've entered the spouse's W-2. I'm going to click continue here. Oh, now it's tracking my refund up here. My refund just went down from $6,500 to $5,100. My North Carolina refund went down to $5. So it's kind of cool. I mean, I get it. You get to see the number move around. It's not cool when you see it go down. It's kind of nice to see it go up. Uh, but again, we're not finished yet, so we're going to continue. All right, so we told her we had self-employment income expenses and interest on 1099. Uh, so this could be a savings account with a bank or a certificate of deposit where you have some savings and some interest that the bank might have sent you a 1099-INT to report that interest. So I'm going to skip to that because it's a little quicker than the self-employment income. And we will add that in here. So did you receive any interest income? Yes. Enter the bank. I'm going to say it's Ally Bank. Ally has some great products with uh, fantastic interest rates in their savings and CDs. So I'm going to type this in. Payer name is Ally Bank. This 1099 belongs to the taxpayer, spouse, or both of us. We're going to say both of us. Box one, interest income. We're going to say we made $200 of interest this year. No early withdrawal, no interest, no federal income. 
Now we have to add in the side hustle. So spouse two had a little bit of a side hustle. A lot of people have side hustles these days and made a little bit of money on that side hustle. So do you have any self-employment income or expenses? Freelancer, independent contractor, on-demand service, Uber, smaller home business space? Yes. All right, what type of income did you receive for this work? 1099 miscellaneous income? So we did receive a 1099. I've got a copy of that here. So this is going to be from the makeup company. We received $7,500 from them. Other self-employment income, if you got cash or checks. So the 1099 is going to report the income that maybe another company or someone else paid to you, but you likely have more income in your side business, your self-employment business, than 1099s that you received. So you need to report all of your income, not just the 1099 information. So we'll continue and enter in the 1099 information first. So who paid you? Sales company one paid us. It's formatted like this. Nine, 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 one. All right, box three, nothing. Box four, nothing. Box seven. Box seven had our $7,500 of non-employee compensation in it. Has other info? No. Backup filing? Check. No. All right. Did your spouse have any more self employment income? Yes, because as I mentioned, we also received uh, income from some other people that we sold cosmetics to, not just from the company that gave us the 1099. So we're going to say it's other self employment income. The type of income is sales. And we're going to say we sold $2,500 worth. Did your spouse have any more self-employment income? No. As you can see, our refund continues to go down. All right, let's get the deductions unique to your cosmetic beauty. Unique expenses you may have missed, deductions. So it's going to recommend some deductions that we might have. They're uncovering these deductions that matter most. So that I think what they're probably doing is taking the cosmetic and beauty industry, seeing what typical deductions other people in that industry have, and they're going to ask if you had those. So you started the business in 2019. Did you have any startup costs? We're going to say no. Inventory. We're going to say no. Taxes and licenses. No. We're going to say we do have some supplies. We did do a little bit of advertising. Maybe ran some Facebook ads. We didn't pay any commissions. No communications. We don't have a home office. Legal and professional fees. No. Vehicle. No. We'll have a couple of other miscellaneous expenses. Continue. So the type of income, 10 miscellaneous, other self-employment income, 2,500. So there's our total income there. So supplies, we'll start. So description, we're just going to say supplies to keep this simple. We spent $250 on supplies. Now these are all expenses that you need to track, you need to keep receipts for. Uh, in order to be able to take these deductions because if you are audited you need to be able to back this information up and prove that it was a valid business expense. I don't see where they are telling you anything about uh, that or helping you through what expenses actually qualify or what kind of documentation you need to keep in order to verify this if the IRS were to check it. So let's see, these are advertising. So we're going to say we ran some Facebook ads for $150. So you can see our refunds climbing back up now as we take some deductions against our taxable income here. So our other miscellaneous expenses, we're going to just say miscellaneous expenses were $400 and continue. Again, you can't just type in numbers here. You have to have kept track of your valid business expenses, know what you can deduct against your business income, and enter that information in here. So we're going to say that we are done with this Schedule C business. How much took place in the United States? All of it did. Was any of it work for a former employer? No. Did you have any deductions that you'll claim at elsewhere? No. Are you ready to run your audit assessment for the cosmetic beauty? Absolutely. Let's see what that does. So my audit risk is low. Spouse's audit assessment is ready. Audits are rare. No matter what score you get, you can file with any score. 
things look good, don't need to double check anything, didn't miss any deductions. I don't know how it knows we did not miss any deductions because we told it everything. We told it the expenses we had, we put in the dollar amounts of the expenses. So if it says you missed, you've missed zero deductions, it's impossible for it to know that because I might have had legal fees for setting up this business that I didn't tell it it had because I forgot about it. So again, completely useless piece of information there because you have to know what you're putting into the computer. TurboTax only knows what you told it. Uh, my audit risk is low. What does this mean? All right. We are going to continue. Give me an option there to talk to a tax expert. Remember, if you click that box, it's going to jump you into that other category. I think the minimum price on talking to the tax expert was $150. Do your spouse have another line of self-employment work? No. All right. So self-employment tax. So self-employment tax is separate from your income tax. Your income tax is um, the tax that is based on your taxable income after some deductions. And your self-employment tax is going to be basically the same thing as your payroll tax if you're a W-2 employee for a company. It's your Social Security and Medicare. You have to pay both halves of that, the whole amount, on your self-employment income because you don't have an employer who splits that with you uh, under FICA and so it's going to tell you you can increase your refund and reduce your self-employment tax of $1,300 by checking for more expenses. The amount is reflected in your federal income amount of $29.85. So now it is in that total um, refund due to us or tax owed if it happened to be tax owed. So basically everything that we have has absorbed what we owe in self-employment tax and we're still getting a refund which is great. We're not going to owe any additional taxes at this point. Uh, you can click on why you pay self-employment tax if you want to know more about that. Uh, but again, it says you can reduce this by finding more expenses. Well, you have to have actually had more expenses. So if you already inputted everything, then this, again, is useless. But if it reminds you, oh, wait, I did have that other expense. Let me go back and get it. Uh, then I guess that this line would be helpful for you. Great news, because you're fine with TurboTax, you get QuickBooks self-employed for free. All right, I don't want that, but I'm going to click continue, see if I can skip it. All right, so we've done our W-2, we've done our self-employment, and we did our 1099 interest. So that is wrapping up our income. Let's see where it takes us next. Real CPAs, it's going to give us another ad and ask if we want to do the TurboTax live self-employed, live self-employed, or just the self-employed. And we can add $170, $230. I'm going to say no thank you. It's going to say they're right here if I ever need them. I can click on this box and they will charge me more and I can talk to this nice lady who will help me. All right, were either of you affected by natural disaster? No. Did you require seller exchange virtual currency? No. So now it actually moved from income to deductions. Let's dig into your tax breaks. Here's what's coming up. Work on tax breaks, check for other tax breaks. Let's get started. All right, let's find other tax breaks. Do you or your spouse have any children? Yes, we already told you we had children. So we got to answer that same question again. Did you pay for dependent care expenses? No. Did you make any estimated tax payments? No. Did you have an HSA? No. Spend money on school expenses as a teacher? No. Continue. So again, it's just getting information from you to find out what kind of tax breaks that you might get. So child and under, other dependent tax credit, $2,000. So it knows we have a child. It knows that the child qualifies. It already asked enough questions for that. So let's put that tax break in here. Student loan interest paid. And that was already included up here in our refund. So you see that that didn't change any. So we're going to say that we did have some student loan interest. So again, you have some debt from college that you're still paying off. You'll get a 1098 form that will tell you that you paid interest on that. So we'll say that the taxpayer did this. The name of the lender we will say was Chase. And the interest on that loan will say was $1,200 for the year. Continue. Now it's going to deduct that off of your taxable income. And you will see that our tax refund just went up again. And we're going to hit continue. That's the only student loan interest that we have. All right. Income tax is paid. So that is the amount from our W-2s. 
it should be our federal income tax withheld of 2000 plus our federal income tax of 5000 plus potentially this child tax credit. I'm not sure why it's at 9000 Oh, it's, it's our federal withholding and our state withholding. All right, great. So that's 9000 Traditional YRA contribution. So this is popping up because we told it that we contributed to a Roth or a, a traditional IRA. So we're going to say that the taxpayer contributed to a traditional IRA and the spouse did none of the above. So yes, we're going to say contributed to an IRA. That's why we just opened up this. Is this a repayment of retirement distribution? No, it is not. Tell us how much you contributed. We're going to say we contributed 2500 Tell us how much of the above for 2019 you contributed between January 2020 and April 15, 2020. None of it. We contributed all during 2019. So you're going to see our refund climb again because of this deduction. Pay attention up here. Refund went up nicely because we contributed to an IRA that was a deductible expense. Did you change your mind? Switch or recharacterize? No. Any excess contributions? No. Any non-deductible contributions? No. Choose not to deduct the IRA contributions. No. Your deduction summary, okay. All right, so we're going to say, basically, we're going to wrap up our tax breaks. That's everything that we had. Let's check the home buyer credit. No, we did not get a home buyer credit back in 2008. Did you see that? So did you get a home buyer credit back in 2008? This was a credit that was for first time home buyers. I actually qualified for this credit. It's no longer still lingering around. Um, but I thought we could get back to that screen, but I didn't make it back. So let's check. We didn't have any dependent care. We already told it that we didn't. So it's just asking you the same question multiple times to make sure that it's got everything right. Based on what you told us, the standard deduction is best for you because our itemized deductions, basically that's your state income taxes paid right there, home mortgage interest, charitable contributions, medical expenses if they get above a certain amount of your AGI would be deductible here, a couple of other things. Most people, 90, 95% of Americans are going to take the standard deduction now that it is so high. They doubled it with the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. So we're going to say continue. We like the standard deduction, which was already factored in up here. All right, I get a tax break. Qualified business income deduction. So this is new also because of the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. So on your self-employed income uh, for the direct sales of the makeup for your Schedule C business, you get to deduct 20% of the taxable income straight off the top. So I got a deduction for $1,840 here based on the latest IRS guidance. Fantastic. It was already included, so my, my refund didn't change any. And now it's going to ask if I have any uncommon tax situations. Did you or your spouse qualify for investment credit recapture? Again, you can always click more if you don't understand what these questions are asking you. No. Did you live in a nanny or household employee? No. Did you apply for a refund to next year's return? Do I want to apply my refund to next year's return? No. I want to get my refund back. Do I want $3 to go to the presidential campaign? Absolutely not. They have plenty of money that they've raised for that. Do you or your spouse experience identity theft? No, we didn't. Continue. All right, so now we're in other tax situations. We're almost there. Some uncommon. AMT? No, we're not going to worry about that. Business deductions? No, we're not going to worry about that. Additional tax payments, other return info, other tax forms. Let's just keep going. We don't have any of that. So here, let's get your state taxes done right. All right, my state return. They're going to use the federal information. Now, a large majority of states will take the federal uh, adjusted gross income or taxable income, make some additions or deductions to or from that, and get your state taxable income. And so North Carolina is one of those. It says we're almost done. We just got to answer a few questions. Was it your residence all year? Yes. Again, we already told it that. What county did you live in? We're going to say New Bern is in Craven County, so we'll choose that. Veteran, no, no. Were you guaranteed an automatic extension to file your federal return? No. Let's see how North Carolina taxes income. All right, retirement. 
So this is a special North Carolina retirement that is not taxed in the state of North Carolina if you get that. Business adjustments, miscellaneous deductions. So all of these you can click start, answer the questions. We're going to say we're done with North Carolina. Did you buy anything without paying sales tax? Absolutely I did. I bought stuff on Amazon. Sometimes Amazon charges sales tax. Some uh, sellers on Amazon don't. So my suggestion is if your state asks for this, you want to do the safe haven because there's always people buying stuff online and lots of times some of it's not taxed. So you want to just go ahead and get that safe haven so that you don't have any reason for the state to show up and ask you for additional sales tax that you didn't pay. Do you have records for all the items that you paid? Of course not. Why would you? Did any of your purchases cost $1,000 or more? We'll say no. Use the tax purchases less than $1,000 each. Estimated use tax is $29. We're going to accept that because, again, it's using the safe haven. Sales tax paid to other states, I'm going to say none. Amount of your use tax, $29. Okay. Let's check way to save you money in North Carolina. All right. Save some money. Business and investment credits, other credits, we're going to say done with credits. Refund, underpayment, other forms, fine extension, done. Your 29 taxes are ready for us to check. Done. North Carolina tax is already paid. Total North Carolina tax is $2,300. North Carolina tax due $315. Well, what about my maximum refund? I thought I was going to get my maximum refund. I'm getting a federal refund of 3429 Why am I not getting a state refund? How did I get these numbers? Well, we took the taxes already paid. We took your total state taxes, and that's how we got these numbers. Okay, but you didn't tell me why I'm not getting a maximum refund in the state of North Carolina. I thought you guaranteed a maximum refund. Well, the problem is there wasn't, basically there just wasn't enough state withholding on the W-2 that I created. Uh, to cover all of the North Carolina taxes. And like I said, if your situation doesn't uh, result in a refund, then it just doesn't result in a refund. There's nothing TurboTax can do to get you a refund if you're not entitled to one. So that's basically all this is doing. We're going to click continue. Your federal and state taxes are done. Let's file them together. They're 100% accurate calculations. Again, TurboTax will not guarantee that your tax return is accurate because we put in all the information. So I could have accidentally typed in 41,000 instead of 31,000 for my W-2 and TurboTax would have no clue that I typed it in incorrectly. Now they did give an option for us to upload a PDF form so maybe that would help um, avoid some of those miskeyed numbers but you always want to go back, double check those numbers, make sure everything's keyed in correctly. It says I can keep my state return with my federal return for $40. So I think we were somewhere around $90 to file the return. We're adding $40 for the federal for the state return. So we're now up to $130. And that was skipping past all of the additional services that tried to sell us. Uh, so I want to finish up my federal and state together. Yeah, I want to do both of them. North Carolina resident at another state. I'm done with the state. It looks like some of your tax forms aren't ready. Okay, so it's going to tell me that I can't e-file because I didn't type in my social security numbers. I also didn't type in all of the um, information that would be necessary to actually e-file the return. It's going to ask me if I want to add this max, defend and restore again. We've already said we didn't. Before we can file, we need a little bit more, complete my return. All right. So I'm not going to go through and add in uh, the Social Security numbers, but basically we have finished the tax return. We did that in well under an hour. Uh, so we had two W-2s. Spouse one had a full-time job, $40,000 of taxable income. Spouse two had a part-time job, $20,000 of income. Spouse two had a side hustle selling makeup uh, with some business expenses and a 1099. We had interest income, a uh, small amount from a savings account. We had uh, interest deduction from a loan on our student loans from college that we were able to take. We had a child that gave us a child tax credit, and we also had that uh, IRA deduction for spouse one who contributed to a regular IRA and was able to deduct that. So that's all we had. That's a pretty simple return. Uh, that's why we were able to complete it very quickly. We also did not go through every single question that TurboTax asked us. We skipped uh, a couple of those. 
We're getting a federal refund of $3,400. We're getting tax due in North Carolina of $315, netting around $3,100 of refund. So we are basically done. Uh, it would let you walk through and file the tax return. I'm going to play around. Let's see what else we can do if we click on federal. Uh, federal, that's going to take us back to the returns here. If we click review, it's going to show us what we can look at. If we click file, it's going to tell us we're not ready because of those same problems where I didn't add everything in. Let's see what tax tools are. We can search by topic, flag things, look at my fees. Not sure what that is. View the tax summary. Let's click view the tax summary. Okay, so this is something I didn't actually think TurboTax would do. Uh, so it's showing us our total income of 69000 Now we had to go down here to tax tools, click on tools, and view our tax summary. We can clear and start over, delete a form, save it to my computer. We might try that. Transfer last year's TurboTax return from your computer, file an extension, share my file with an agent, topics list, my fees. Let's click my fees. Oh, this is where it's going to tell us, I think, how much we have to pay. So yeah, $90 for the self-employed TurboTax, $40 for the state. We're going to pay $130 plus sales tax. All right, so we have our total taxable income here, adjustments to income. So I can tell you what those are, AGI, itemized, qualified business income deduction. Remember, it gave us a screen explaining a little bit about what that was. Our taxable income is 38000 so our tax is 4271 We have tax credits. Now, it doesn't tell you what those are, but that's that child tax credit. We have one child, uh, which gives you a maximum child tax credit if, if it's qualifying child of $2,000 per child. We do have enough taxes. Uh, to offset that tax credit so we get the full amount. That's going to leave us. Uh, we have other taxes. That's your self-employment tax there. Uh, is what that should be. So our total tax, again, 4000 minus the 2 plus the 1300 is going to give you 3571 Our total payments. This was our withholding from our paycheck. $2,000 on one W-2 and 5000 on the other is withholding of 7000 So again, all of this information above is the calculation of your taxes. If you had $10,000 withheld from your paychecks, then your refund would be $3,000 more, it would be $6,429. If you had $3,000 or $4,000 less withholding on your uh, W-2, then you're actually going to owe about $570. And so that's the thing with this is TurboTax can guarantee your maximum refund. All they're guaranteeing is that I don't really know what they're guaranteeing, actually, because your tax return, your situation is what it is. Now, if you forget a deduction and it asks you about a deduction, maybe you forgot you had a kid and it says, do you have a kid? You say yes. Then it's going to help you get all of your deductions. If you forgot that you had student loan interest and TurboTax says, did you have student loan interest? You say, oh, yeah, I did. You click yes. So all they're doing is basically helping you remember and sort of know what deductions you can take if you go through their questions. However, we skipped quite a few of them. So if you do that, then it's not going to jog your memory. And if you have something that you forgot to put in, you're definitely not getting your maximum refund if you forgot to put in a deduction. And TurboTax has no way to guarantee against that. So the guarantee, again, it's just a marketing ploy. Uh, now, their calculations, I'm going to assume, are correct. Calculating taxes is actually pretty easy. You add you subtract and you multiply. Any fourth grader could calculate your taxes if they know the formula to do it. So there's the summary. Let's go back to these tools. I was going to click on save it to my computer. I want to see what happens if I do that. This is tax return tax 2019. So that file some kind of TurboTax file. It doesn't actually let me see the tax return. It's nothing I can open. I probably have to have the desktop version of TurboTax to open that. Or maybe if I lose this data, I can upload that and restore this tax return file. Other tools, uh, nothing in there. So over here on the top, I can click Upgrade. I'm sure that's where, yeah, they're going to try to sell me the live CPA. I've already got the highest you can do it plan of self-employed. They're just going to try to upsell me there. I can bookmark, flag this page. I can search for child tax credit. It'll give me information. 
on that and I can click help which again is more search it looks like turbo uh, like a AI turbo tax assistant or I can click on live tax advice now, I don't want to click that because I think as soon as I click that they're gonna make me pay so here's a tax summary for North Carolina showing that my taxes were 2,315 withholding was 2,000 so I owe 315 dollars all right, so now that we have completed the tax return with TurboTax, what are my thoughts? What's the review of the software? First of all, it's pretty simple. I mean, I think my nine-year-old could walk through the software, answer the questions, take a W-2, and transfer the numbers from the paper to the software. That's not complicated. It's pretty easy to do. And if you have a very basic tax return, kind of like this one, I mean, we got into a Schedule C business here, but it was a very simple one. Uh, but if you have a tax return where you're just doing a W-2, TurboTax is perfectly fine. You can do that. And in fact, if you just have a W-2, you're probably going to end up being able to file for free under their free version. So again, very simple tax return with a W-2. Go for it. Now, beyond that, though, here's what I always tell everyone. You need to be able to look at the actual 1040 form. I did not pull up the 1040 form on TurboTax. I didn't see it actually until I was going back through and looking at the video, and I've already deleted the account that I created. So I didn't go back in and look, but there was a preview of the 1040 form. So what I would suggest is that you definitely look at that. Now, if you are someone who can look at the 1040 form, read through the actual tax forms, the Schedule C in this situation, Schedule B if it prints one for the interest, the North Carolina tax form, tax form. if you can look through those, understand them uh, to a point where you're comfortable the information on the tax return is correct then I would recommend you go ahead and you use a self prep tax software however if you're gonna look at the form and say I, I really don't know I'm just gonna trust that because I answered TurboTax's questions that my tax return is correct then I would highly recommend you do not do a self prep tax return so what you want to do there is you definitely want to go out and you want to find an experienced tax preparer to help you out. So again, if you can't look at it and be confident and comfortable that the tax return itself is accurate, do not rely on simply answering these questions. Now, how long did it take and what are some reasons why you might choose to self-prepare as opposed to going to a CPA who is more experienced in doing tax returns? A lot of people want to save money. Well, you know, this took us on this very simple return a little under an hour, and I was blowing through it very fast, very experienced with preparing tax returns, and created a simple example for us. It took us a little under an hour. I cut some things out of the video, too, where it was loading between screens, and a couple of questions that it asked, I skipped through, uh, cut out a few of those kind of random ones that, that really didn't add too much to the video, but were there. The other thing I did was I did not read through half of that information. So if you're going to sit there and you're going to read through it, it's going to take you at least two hours. You're going to be going and sitting down. So when you're saving uh, some money, uh, what you, it's costing you is time. And so if that's a trade-off for you, then, then that's fine. Uh, but again, that's assuming that you can look at the tax return, understand what it's saying, and feel confident and comfortable filing it. Now, the next thing that I would say is saving money. Now, we had a small Schedule C business side hustle. A lot of people do that. And we were getting into the $90 plus state fee was 40. Was it 40? I think it was 90 plus 40. So $130 minimum to file that tax return. Now, there was an option where it said, you know, speak to a live CPA. And that got up to even 190 or 200 uh, on that and then there was also the additional fees if you wanted to opt into their max defend program uh, with their IRS audit support and so again you're not that far off if you have a simple return from what a CPA is going to charge you so is the CPA worth uh, another hundred dollars on top of that if you have to pay a CPA 350 450 for a return like this absolutely they're going to be available throughout the year now, even if you choose that live uh, CPA option on TurboTax, I don't know if you put the return down and come back three days later if you can get the same CPA. It's possible that you can. I don't know. But if you go to a local CPA or someone even that you work virtually or remote with, which I do all the time with clients, you get the same person. They're available to you throughout the year for any questions that you have and for planning purposes. So I think that a, a CPA... Or an enrolled agent, someone like that that's a tax preparer will be significantly 
uh, more valuable to you and will be well worth the extra one, two hundred dollars that you have to pay in order to get them to prepare your return. So with that said, um, is TurboTax right for you? Maybe, maybe it is. Uh, I, I can't make that call for you. Again, it comes down to um, what I would recommend would be your comfort level and how much you understand the tax return and how much uh, time trade-off you want to spend there as well. You know, you can always buy your time back. Time you can't get more of, but you can buy it back by paying a preparer to get your tax return done for you, save the couple of hours that you would have to spend uh, doing it yourself, and then, you know, just add 30 minutes, an hour, two hours on top of that if you're going to be reading about those things. One of the things we blew through was the QBI, Qualified Business Income Deduction. It gave it to you. However, there are some qualifications, some stipulations where you might not qualify for it. And so you definitely want to read up on that if you're going to take it. And that's just going to cost you more time. So again, there's TurboTax for you. It's not my favorite. I don't like the interview style. Again, I do this for a living. So I just like to go directly to the input screens, put in the information, uh, and it saves a lot of time that way. But you know, maybe, maybe this is the right uh, fit for you if you're very comfortable looking at the tax return yourself or if you have a very, very simple tax return. If you have any questions, or even if you get into your tax return, and you go, "Man, I just don't want to do this." Uh, it's pulling up some things I'm not comfortable with because I don't quite understand them. I, I'm not familiar with them, uh, and that's the thing, right? The CPA just it, it, we do this all the time, so it's it's not necessarily that we are better at understanding it. We just are in it all the time. We see it over and over again, and that gives us a better understanding. And it's very commonplace for us to see these things, so we know them off the top of our head just because of how much time we spend uh, in tax returns. And so if you get to that situation, feel free to leave a comment, reach out, email, or schedule an appointment on my website. I would love to help you with your taxes this year. And I hope this video was helpful. I think I'm going to jump into another program, 1040.com, which is a lot like TurboTax. I'll try to make that video shorter probably because it's going to be very similar. But I'm going to review that one as well, see if there's any pluses or minuses, if I can get the cost to be a little bit cheaper for those of you who are going to self-prepare your tax returns. We'll do a review of that one too in a week and post that up here for you. So I hope this video was helpful. If it was, share it with your friends. Please uh, like and subscribe. Like the video, subscribe to the YouTube channel here uh, so that you get updates for future videos that I post. Again, I hope that they're helpful to you and beginning to bring a little bit more peace of mind to you and your tax and finance responsibilities. Thanks again for watching.